Welcome back to Rouge Radio, and I am Reed Duffy, and very pleased to be joined by quarterback of the Regina Rams. It's Mark Mueller with us, and Mark, a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Now, Mark, of course, uh, a lot of people are going to know your name. It's It's been out, especially on TSN recently. You are the grandson, of course, of the legendary Ron Lancaster, but many people don't know that your dad was also a professional football player. Larry Mueller was a linebacker for my favorite NFL team, the St. Louis Rams. I mean, it, you you are an individual who just has football in your blood. Well, yeah, even though uh, actually my old man actually played for the Regina Rams, that's a Wikipedia faux pas, I guess, that one of my friends must have thought was a funny joke, which my dad has been running with and has been telling everyone that he actually played for the St. Louis Rams. So for the past couple of weeks, my dad has been one of the biggest celebrities in town. <laughs> oh, that is actually, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. That's yeah, big. oh, yeah. And and uh, if I'm not mistaken, he actually played for the Regina Rams before they were a CIS team when they were a junior team. Yes, correct, yeah. And now he's a coach with us at, uh, with, the, with the university team. Yeah, I've uh, I've actually covered uh, the CJFL uh, locally here with the Hamilton Hurricanes, and we hear a lot of great stories about junior football. What was it uh, What was it like growing up with two such uh, big football influences in your life? Uh, football was always a part of my life. You know, it's it's been the biggest thing. Uh, you know, growing up, my my grandpa was the, you know head coach at Edmonton and the Tie Cats, and uh, my dad was the assistant general manager from '89 uh, to like '91 or '92 with the Riders. So. Uh, Football was always the biggest part of my life. I loved it, you know, hanging around the locker room as a little kid, you know, in Edmonton and Hamilton. And, uh, it's been a way of life for my entire family, and it's been good to us, and uh, hopefully I can stay in it as long as I can. When did you first get that itch that you wanted to be a quarterback? Because it's it's well known that quarterbacks are, are natural leaders. I've read a lot of reports on, on you that, that say the same, but when was it that you first got that itch that that's where you wanted to be on the field? Uh, actually, you know, it didn't have, I played, uh, I was kind of a chunkier little guy when, you know, when I was growing up, so I played tight end and tackle uh, in Adam football up until my last year Adam when I was about, I guess, you know, 10 or 11. And the only reason I started playing quarterback is I was the only guy on the team that year that could take the snap properly and understood how to hand off the ball. So uh, I got put there almost by mistake, and uh, it's kind of worked out pretty well for me. Hey, though, it definitely has worked out well for you. Of course, the quarterback of the Regina Rams and your time at Regina has been a strong one for the team. And, of course, you got recently invited to Edmonton Eskimos training camp. But before we go on to the Regina Rams, I just want to get to uh, going to the Eskimos. I know that uh, it's very rare in these times to see CIS quarterbacks, be, let alone invited to camp, but be able to stick with a team. And the Eskimos seem very, very high on you. Uh, what was it like going to their camp, and uh, what did they say to you uh, when, they, uh, when, when they let you go? Uh, it was a great experience, you know, to be able to to learn from guys like Marcus Crandall, Ricky Ray, and Kerry Joseph. Uh, you know, the, all guy, all great cup winning quarterbacks. Uh, uh, it was unbelievable. I've learned I learned so much in the time there. You know how you know reads, uh, drop depth. You know how much faster the game is. Uh, it was a great experience, and hopefully, I can take uh, I can take a bunch of stuff back to the Rams here. You know, my last year. And uh, you know, when they let me go, they they knew I was going to go back to school. I knew I was going to go back to school. I wanted to come back to the Rams for my fifth season. And, uh, you know, I, I think I can play there. You know, they think I think I'll get a good chance to go back if I play well this year. And uh, they were pleased with how I played, and I was pleased with how it turned out. Yeah, it would be very exciting to have another CIS quarterback join the CFL ranks. We're, we really uh, have that constant question of why CIS quarterbacks have been shunned in recent years, but it seems like you're the next one in line that's going to break that ceiling. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. You know, Brannigan uh, – you know, we were all cheering for him, all us Canadian quarterbacks, you know, to go in there. And he did really well in that game when he played at Montreal last year. I know I watched that, you know, just to watch him. And uh, it looks like Brad's, Brad's doing well in Calgary, and uh, hopefully he stays. And, you know, hopefully he stays one for him and one for that uh, he's not back at Ottawa and we have to compete against him this year. So uh, <laughs> uh, and ho- hopefully we, uh, you know, hopefully the Canadians, you know, the, the CFL starts taking a good look at us Canadian quarterbacks. And, uh, I know, it would be great for me to, you know, avoid growing up and still be able to play football for a living. Well, that's that's what we're pushing for here on Rouge Radio as well. More looks at Canadian quarterbacks in the CFL. You really want to see it, especially with the import rules up here. But talking about competing this year, going back to the Regina Rams, how does it feel to be, without a doubt, the, the unquestioned head man now? It is your team beyond the shadow of a doubt at Regina. You were the starter last year, and now you're the, the leader, the engine that's going to make it run. What's that like? Uh, we had a bunch of other leaders on the team, but I've always looked at myself as, you know, as a leader on the team. Uh, you know, when you're the starting quarterback, it goes as far as you'll want to take it. And 
I, that's why I play quarterback. That's why I like quarterback because when the game's on the line, the ball's in your hands and no one else's. And uh, I know I like that, and I think we have a really, you know, we're shaping up to be, you know, a veteran squad. The thing's kind of working out nice with, you know, Brandon Owens coming back as well uh, from Hamilton, and uh, we know we got a good chance out here. If we get out of out west, I think we can make some noise and uh, you know, go make a Vanier run. Only lose five or six starters. I think we should be really good this year. Now, of course, getting out of the West is no uh, easy feat unto itself. You're going to have a lot of competition out there. I would assume, namely, the Calgary Dinos probably still uh, looking like they're going to give you guys a big run. But if you do get out of the West, you have to look towards the East as well. And how do you feel you match up against some of the top teams, not just out West, but the Lavals, the Montreals, and, and different challenges that might pop up out of the East? I think that you know when you look at it, the Can West is you know one of the t- one of if not the toughest football conference. You know, there's no gimme games out here. You know, guys play tough every game. It's, you know, you, the U of A makes the playoffs and they knock off the top team. That shows how close it is. You know, out here that there's no everyone plays tough. It doesn't matter who you play. You know, the sixth place team, the the first place team, everyone comes hard. So I think we we prepare very well and for when we the teams get out of the conference. You know, it's kind of like that. Uh, you know, we beat each other up kind of thing. So. But we still it's bad better competition every week than you know in some of the other places. But uh, I think you know I, I hopefully I can worry about those Eastern teams. I'm not going to look too much into it now. But hopefully I get the game plan for those guys this year. Yeah, well, that would be a very exciting uh, turn of events to say the least to see in that Vanier Cup. And of course uh, it would be great storylines with, as I said earlier, your grandfather and your dad. And what have you learned specifically from them? Of course, your grandfather, one of the greatest quarterbacks in, in football history. I mean he's up there with uh, Damon Allen and Anthony Cavill for our more recent listeners uh, in terms of the best of all time, and your dad a linebacker, so a bit of a switch. You must have gotten a bit of perspective from both sides of the ball. Oh, absolutely, and uh, things that I've learned, just you know, to have fun. You know, When it stops being fun, it's your time to get out, and I know I haven't, I haven't even been close to stop having fun yet. You know, it's football. If you can't have fun playing football, I don't know what you can have fun doing. But uh, just the amount of work you got to put put in outside outside of just practice. you got to work out. you got to you got to watch film. you got to prepare with your guys. And the more you're with the team, the more you're with the guys on your team, the better you're going to be on, on the field. And I learned that from not only my grandpa, but the guys that I grew up around in Hamilton, like Danny McManus, Darren Flutie, Carl Coulter, Dave Hack, guys like that, they are always together off, you know, on and off the field. And I think that made a big difference come you know, game time, that you knew what he was, that he would do it for you because you'd do it for him. Absolutely. And that, that, is, uh, that is a great look at what you see, especially in Canadian football. And I'll, I'll get you out of here on this one, Mark, that – it, it really seems that as opposed to football south of the border, there's a greater sense of camaraderie and a greater sense of brotherhood in, in Canadian football. And I just want you to, to speak to that. Growing up around the game and, and being a student of the game, really what is it like to, to be at these high levels of football now and seeing that brotherhood and camaraderie? Oh, it's great, you know. And how guys, football is the ultimate team sport. Eh? It's not, you know, you, the one guy can't carry you. So you gotta you got to count on that, that – uh, that 24th or 25th or 26th guy, as much as you count on one, two, and three. So you know when you're on and off the field, the best times of football are always is always the locker room. You know you're not going to remember practice on you know September 8th, but you might remember a time in the locker room on on September 8th that you know a joke or you know a prank you played or something like that. You'll remember those things. You won't remember practice, but you remember those things, and that's the best part of football. Mark Mueller, it's been a pleasure to have you on the station. We'd love to have you on again throughout the CIS season. Uh, we, we will be covering it very much in depth this year at Rouge Radio, and it, uh, if you'd be willing to, we'd love to have you come back. Absolutely, I'd love to. Thank you very much. All the best this season with Regina, and all the best with your future headed on towards the CFL. Mark Mueller, ladies and gentlemen, the Regina Rams, a real prospect to keep an eye on. Thank you very much, and thank you for listening to Rouge Radio.